Well, we're in the midst of a series on spiritual transformation. I'm talking about those life practices that change you from a transactional relationship with God to a transformational relationship with the living uh, Lord of the universe. And so I've talked in previous videos about prayer, about reading, reading the Bible, reading other books, reading classics and so forth. Today I want to talk about reading the book of nature. Now the book of nature is not something you're going to find in a bookstore. It's not something that you'll find for sale. It's as free as the air you breathe and as vast as the universe. And by reading the book of nature, you can experience God's invisible qualities, his eternal power, as Paul talks about in Romans chapter 1, his divine nature. And uh, let me use an illustration that you might find is maybe off-putting a little bit, because Albert Einstein is not a Christian, but Albert Einstein was a reader of the book of nature. I think that's why he was able to do some of the prodigious things that he did. He was an intellect like none other, but he oftentimes saw himself as a little child that entered a huge library filled with books in many different languages. And he was talking about the book of nature. He said that the child knows someone must have written those books. It doesn't know how to understand the languages in which they were written. He doesn't suspect the mysterious order and arrangement of the books and the way they were written. He doesn't know what all of this is about, but what the child knows, and he made himself out to be a child like this, the child knows the attitude of even the most intelligent human being towards God is the attitude of subservience to something that is beyond himself. Now, I pointed this out. Einstein rejected the personal God of the Bible, but he revered the God who gives glimpses of himself in the library of nature, the one who reveals himself in the harmony of all that has been made. You know, as David said, uh, the heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day they pour forth speech. Night after night they proclaim knowledge. There's no speech or language where their voice is not heard. Their words go out to the ends of the earth. For, for Einstein, the library books, the book of nature, were as wonderful as they were mysterious. And so he said the most beautiful emotion we can experience is this mysterious this mysterium tremendum. It is the fundamental emotion that stands at the cradle of all true art and science. He to whom this emotion is a stranger, said Einstein, well, he can no longer wonder and stand in awe. It is as though he were dead. I think he used the illustration of being a snuffed out candle. <laughs> We don't want to be like that. We must ever remember that God has revealed himself not only in the Bible, but the book of nature. And by the way, the parallel between them is so complete that Origen, an early church father, said the person who is asking questions of nature and the person who is asking questions of scripture are bound to arrive at the exact same conclusion. Why? Because the author is the same. Intimacy with the book of nature is directly linked to spiritual renaissance. When we give into the power and presence of the spirit, we encounter the hand of omnipotence in all that has been made. It is resplendent in the stars. It reveals itself in the diversity of plants and trees. It roils in the rhythm of the waves. It resides in the mystery of the wind. Those who ignore the book of nature, well, they do so at their own peril. I hope that's not you. Because what we truly need is a cleansing of the toxins, an escape from light pollution, so that we can see that the heavens, as I just mentioned, quoting David, declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. They display knowledge. They pour forth speech. There's no speech or language where their voice is not heard. Their voice goes out to the ends of the earth. Watch the eagle soar. Get out of the house to do that, of course.
Listen to the babbling brook. Consider the flowers, the leaves. Allow the differentiated snowflakes to fall softly upon your eyelids. Open your eyes and know that God is near. Here's the bottom line. Read the Bible and experience the mind of God. Read books and engage minds that God created in his image and his likeness. Read the book of nature. And when you do, you are through those, well, those little words. You're going to see that they express in unison the logos. Purge the toxins. Cleanse the lenses. Let the shining begin. It's a spiritual discipline that can absolutely transform your life. Well, we've talked about prayer. We've talked about reading in all its various formats. In um, the next series of videos, I want to talk about fasting, which is a many splendored spiritual discipline that can transform you. Don't tune me out on fasting. The next video is going to be on fasting. You want to tune into that video because this is a spiritual discipline that is truly transformational.